Hello again everybody, it's like Attack is here with my wall super show review. A three hour wall for Monday, November 14th. Now three hour walls can either be a hit or a miss. I call it in the middle. Tonight's wall heading towards Survivor Series. Uh uh, a little bit of a whippy side with uh, what we got. Two disqualifications, a squash, in two segments that was a little bit too long. One was a big, I think both can be considered epic fails. So let's kick it off with our first segment of the night, which was the Michael Cole Challenge. I think we all knew this was gonna be, this was gonna be fucking stupid. I didn't know it was gonna be uh, this fucking stupid. This segment went 10 minutes too long. I don't wanna explain it. I think CM Punk explained it very well. It was a waste of fucking time. We should have had Zack Ryder match. You know what I mean? Zack Ryder was only in segments tonight. He wasn't even in a match tonight. Are you serious? Bro? Speaking of that, I'll get to him and Ziggler in a minute. So, Michael Cole said, Jay Hall, I got tests. You win all three, you win. So, we had an all wrestling match. Jay Hall wins that. Michael Cole. Pitting. Then JR and Cole in a dance contest. Let me say this. At least JR did a little bit of dancing, but Cole, good. And then the moment that we knew it was all fixed, the weight competition would say who weighed less. I think we all knew it was like, uh oh. This, like, we all knew Michael Cole was going to win this challenge or whatever. But it was going to be in this manner with having this weight thing. So then after Michael Cole won, because JR had to win all three of his challenges in a row, and then it went the third, so JR automatically lost by the fourth, here comes CM Punk. Basically saying what everyone thinks. Michael Cole, you're a fucking jackass. And this segment was stupid. Well, he didn't use the exact words, but you know what I mean. They basically said the segment was a waste of time. Your time is up, Cole. And then your little came flying down. You know what I mean? He kept saying Punk, blah, 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 blah. And Punk gave uh, Cole, put him in the air, and a kind of device, knocked him out for the, well, a little bit of the night. With Cole back in the back, JR took his slot. He commentated for most of the first hour, which I wish he should have stayed for the entire night, which I will get to in a moment. So finally after that debacle of a segment, we finally get into our first match, which was a tag team match. Basically, tonight was mostly about building Survivor Series. We saw most of the people booked in Survivor Series in action, including all members of Team Orton and Team Barrett. Well, well, we find out who replaced Christian in a moment. So we kick off with two members of Team Orton, Sin Cara and Kofi Kingston. Teaming up against two members of Team Barrett, Cody Wells, and the former Sin Cara, too, Hootie Cole. Even I can't pronounce it right. Good match at the beginning of the night. You know, probably the only really good match of the night that wasn't wooed by a DQ or a squash. And towards Survivor Series, the big Team Barrett sent the big message with Cody Wells sending, sending old uh, Kofi in the dream the crossroads in a 1-2-3 victory for Hunako and Cody Wells sending a message to Team Orton. It was a decent matchup. You know, I'm glad Tony get, Cody didn't get to speak. I'm glad also that one, Cody got rid of his face mask at last. He's back to his old smoke and mirror steam, kind of a remix of it. So, but we'll see what these guys can do at Survivor Series, this traditional Survivor Series match. And I think everyone can agree with me here. That is it stupid that we only get one Survivor Series match a year? I think there was like one year we got like two. You know? You know, it's Survivor Series. You know, they were built on elimination matches. And I know, yes, the first singles match in Survivor Series history took place 20 years ago with The Rock, the man The Rock beat at WrestleMania 18, Hulk Hogan, facing against The, the Undertaker, which I will talk about him in a minute. Cole. Anyway, 
So ever since then, we've had a lot more singles matches at Mania at Survival than elimination matches. So can we just have like at least maybe next year at the 26th annual Survivor Series at one more than one traditional match? Learn from that. So then we had our second match. Wait a minute. It wasn't even a match. It was a segment, basically. It was announced, of course, I mentioned on the attack line eight, that Christian was injured and he's out. Dolph Ziggler is now replacing Christian, which puts a little bit of a wrench on the scheduled plans for Zack Ryder taking on Dolph Ziggler for the U.S. title. So Dolph's going to replace Christian and you're not going to give Zack Ryder a title shot in the New York City area? Are you serious, bro? Come on. Well, we've seen Ziggler wrestle twice. You know, Ziggler wrestled twice at Vengeance. Maybe he'll do that again. But as of right now, there will be no U.S. title match at Survivor Series. Zack Ryder gets screwed in his home state in New York City. What the fuck? So then we have Dolph Ziggler facing up against a member of Team Orton that's been a little bit of a thorn besides Zack Ryder, which was Mason Ryan. God, this match was terrible. It wasn't even a match. It was like a segment. Mason was wiggling Ziggler around like a wag doll, and then Vicky came in, slapped him. Disqualification. Are you serious? Dolph Ziggler gets disqualified just because Vicky slapped the person. Come on. And then Dolph Ziggler got into the Ryan Slam. I can't really name his move. He doesn't even move a name for his Fro Nelson Slam move. You know what I mean? So... Ziggler got put on that move, but Mason Ryan didn't win by DQ. It won't be the only DQ of the night. And then we see Mick Foley arriving. Now, Mick Foley was advertised for Boston. He was then took it off the card in Boston. He wasn't advertised. And I think everyone knew Mick Foley was coming back anyway. He came back doing the European tour last week. And he was in Boston tonight. But it wasn't exactly a rock and sock reunion. So we began the second hour with Mick Foley coming out. Talking about rock and Cena. And Mick Foley was trying to get the Cena out there and trying to make rock and Cena coexist. Which won't and never will happen. By doing Cena his own, this is your life. Talk about epic fail. This was terrible. Cole's segment and Mick Foley's segment were the two worst things of the night that really dragged the show a bit. And I love Mick Foley. I think everyone agrees. Mick Foley is cool, but that This Is Your Life was terrible. It wasn't necessary. You know what I mean? Cena and Wack would never get along. Mick Foley, give it up. Cena and Wack will never coexist. We saw that at the end of the show, which I'll get to in a moment. So Mick Foley had all these people come out, including John Cena's father, who was like, don't boo him, and yada, yada, yada. So that was beyond terrible. In the past moment, the ending. Not just because A, it ended, but two, because Rock came out and Rock fought on Mick Foley to end the segment. You know what I mean? It was like, it's stupid. That was a stupid segment. Two segments tonight, and they went ten minutes too long. I know they were trying to recapture that magic with Foley and Wack. This Was Your Life was one of the best segments of all time. One of the funniest segments and most rated segments. But I bet that you get this irony here. Wack and Foley, This Is Your Life. Most rated segment ever. I bet you I'll laugh my ass off if I find out that Foley, Cena, This Is Your Life. Worst rated segment in war history. And it deserves to be. Well... Both segments, Cole's Challenge and Foley's This Is Your Life, should be made the two most least watched segments of all time. So there you go. And we also had like Bob McCann coming out, all these people talking about Cena, negative things, and then it helped. So I was like, chains of a moat and flipping the dance from the stars. <laughs> anyway. We finally had a second official match. It was like an hour. We only really had like one real match in a DQ, so we finally had a real second match, which was Sheamus taking on Jack Swagger. Now this match, at least Vicky 
Stayed out of the fucking way of this match. Decent match between Sheamus and Swagger Lee. Sheamus did really well, because especially in Boston, which is like Irish territory, just ass drop kick Murphy's. But Sheamus got the win with the pro kick, giving Orton's team a little bit of momentum after Kofi and Sin Cara's loss earlier in the evening. So Sheamus got the victory with a pro kick on Swagger, and thankfully, Vicky kept out of the way. And then, if you thought that DQ wasn't bad enough early in the night with Mason Ryan and Ziggler, we had basically a minute diva squash. Kelly Kelly taking on Natalia. Should I need may I say more? Stupid, stupid, stupid. 30 second squash. What was it? Natalia and a sharpshooter. Kelly will go up. Squash match. Next topic. <laughs> John Lorelina is talking about stuff. Of course, John Lorelina is booked. After CM Punk did what he did about the Michael Cole thing, John Lorelina came out, blah, 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 and he mentioned that he made a match with a Bunktel teaming up with Mark Henry to team up against their Survivor Series opponents, CM Punk and Big Show. It seemed like Punk wasn't going to make it. Punk got attacked in the back by a Buddha Del Rio before the match, but Punk came out anyway. And gave a valiant effort. And big and see a punk carry the match. Because I mentioned about Big Show Mark Henry not being as agile as he once was. But Mark Henry and Big Show did okay with the Big Show slam attempt on Mark Henry. But in the end, it was a book to Del Rio who basically stole the victory. See a punk was trying for go trying to trying to do a uh, springboard splash on the Abodo. Abodo ducked it, got caught by Mark Henry, got in the world's strongest slam. A Bunto got up, basically picked up the scraps, and got the pin over CM Punk. But no, he wasn't done. He put Punk in the cross arm breaker following the match, sending a message to Punk heading into the title match this Sunday at Survivor Series. And I hope Punk wins, but with Ricardo involved, who knows what will go down there. Then we had Santino Morella coming out. He had a little competition with Zack Ryder earlier. I love Ryder, but his association with Cena is making him less cool with the internet wrestling community. You know what I mean? Like, I love Ryder more than anybody else does, but he had it. This continued this whole Cena thing. So we had Santino coming out talking about Boston and the Warrior One book. Because Santino was one, of, was one of the last two men in the Warrior One book. He almost won the one but of course, I don't want it. Seriously, Santino winning the Wumble, doubt it. But Santino's like, I would be a champion when I come back to Boston. He was doing his old crazy thing, like John Cena's, and Roy Wumble's, back to his old thing. So then we had Kevin Nash come out. Kevin Nash is like, Santino, I'm a fan of yours, man. Do the trumble. So here comes Santino, trumble. Do, 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 bang. Kick in the face. And then a jackknife from Nash, sending another message to Triple H, waiting for his return. Still treading in the past. But Nash is like, I'm in the war number two, punk. I mean, we're in the war number two, Santino. I got the biggest ovation. Yeah, I didn't get a job for it. Triple H didn't hire me. He only gave me a legends contract, so blah, 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 blah. So Nash basically squashed the hell out of Santino. Moella. So then we had a main event. Wade Barrett facing off against Wayne Yun. Both teams were at ringside. So then we had a main event. Disqualification. All 10 men from both Survivor Series teams got in the ring. And Orton did very well in the match. He basically was going to squash Barrett. He was waiting for his DDT. Then Cody Rhodes came in and Started melee with all 10 members of both teams, with Team Orton standing tall. So Orton's team, the only wins, that, well they had three wins, with Orton and Mason Ryan getting two DQs, Sheamus beating Swagger, the only win by Wade Barrett's team tonight was the Huda Cole and Cody Rhodes win. So we'll see what happens this Sunday at Survivor Series with those two teams. 
And uh, speaking of Survivor Series, I want to pick up Michael Cole for a minute. Michael Cole is talking about debuts and Survivor Series and about Survivor Series matches, about surviving and stuff. He talked about The Undertaker debuting. The Undertaker debuted in 1990 as a member of the Million Dollar Dream Team. First off, the Dream Team was the team, the Million Dollar Team, were facing up against Michael Cole, you dumbass. It was the Million Dollar Team, not the Million Dollar Dream Team. Dream Team was captained by Dusty Rhodes with the Hart Foundation and Coco Beware. Million Dollar Team, DBRC, with the Blues, and of course, The Undertaker. Little history for you kids out there. And he was in Connecticut, I think. Anyway, on to the last segment. The Rock. No one gets a pop like that anymore, man. Whenever, like, when you get Rock and Austin and Fuller to come back in any way, shape, or form, they're going to get a bigger pop than anybody in the current WWE roster. That's a fucking fact. So I came out talking about how he loves Boston. He loves being in Boston. He wants to do everything right now. The phrase of the day is right now. He wanted to do everything right now. He felt the moment. He wanted to feel that moment right now. And I like the fact that the Fruits to Asses chant. The team bring it. Fruits to Asses shut. I like that. First ass chant. I've heard the crowd say, chant in a while. I wish you could chant asshole, but you're not allowed to anymore. TV PG. Anyway. That works like, I don't want to wait till Sunday. I want awesome truth right now. So Austin Truth came out, blabbed their little talk, and saying, Rock, we want you, but not now. We know what you want, but we want what we want when we want it, basically. And they're about to walk out, and here comes John Cena. John Cena and Rock going back and forth. Cena's like, you have to excuse my partner, because for seven years, he has been delivering crappy via satellite messages. And then Rock went back saying, you have to excuse my partner, because he's going to face a big boot up his lady parts. Man, China. Anyway, Rock gets in with back and forth. Miz is like, I'm sick of this. Making excuses. And of course, the Brooks to Asses chant was very loud. And of course, once again, Cena got booted in his hometown. The Rock said, Boston wants Brooks to Asses. And we're doing it. Rock and Cena double teamed on Troop and Miz. And Rock delivered a rock bottom to all truth. But this is where it gets really interesting here. Cena was about to set up the FU on the Miz. Rock grabbed the Miz off of Cena and gave Miz a rock bottom, outshowing Cena. So now we can tell that these two will not get along. And I say this they'll try to get along, and they may win on Sunday, but I bet you 10 bucks. Cena will get rock bottom by the rock by the end of the night this Sunday at Madison Square Garden. And I hope to God the 25th anniversary of Survivor Series is better than the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania. <laughs> but overall, okay, we're all a little bit of hit or miss with some segments that should have been cut. Either cut from the show or cut a little, cut a little off. Like cut a little of the segment or cut it off completely. Of course, Michael Cole Challenge and Mick Foley's This Is Your Life. Both epic fails. Anyway, that is it for my wall review. See y'all later with that mic been intact by the review from Zach. Thank you very much. See you later. And comment below what you guys think of tonight's war. And subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. See you later. Yeah.